Hi, this is Mark Piller. In this video, I'm going to review the process of logging user into your application. Previously, I have discussed how to configure your development environment, and we also reviewed the registration API and the registration screen. So let's just start uh, with the code right away. Uh, I assume you have configured your development environment and you have the source code and the project for the application in your Android Studio. The module we worked with yesterday was called registration uh, and today we're working with login. The very first thing that I'd like you to do is go to backendless settings in registration and copy these two lines from here into the corresponding class in login. The, to do that you open the Java folder and then navigate to the backend settings here. Select the two and paste the code. What this does is it links this module with your backend. Otherwise, if you don't do it, then all the calls will be going after the backend that we created while developing this application. Let's take a look at the layout for the login screen. As you can see, it consists of a very simple form, uh, and this form is sitting inside of the grid layout. Here we have a couple of labels, specifically email address and password, and a few text inputs, email and password. The login button executes the login function against the backend, but we also provided two links for logging in with Facebook and logging in with Twitter. The Facebook and Twitter login will be reviewed in a separate video, and today we're focusing on logging user in using Backendless API. Additionally, there is a link for the registration screen, because typically when the user comes in, we present the login screen. If they don't have an account, there's got to be a way to go to the registration screen. So this is a, a very basic layout, and let's take a look how this layout and the logic behind it works from the coding perspective. All the code is going to be in the login activity, double-click that class. When the class is created, a couple of things are happening. First of all, we do the app initialization. It was also reviewed yesterday. This sets up the application ID and secret key with the app. And then we're setting up the listeners for the login button, for the login with Facebook, login with Twitter, and we also make the registration link. The make registration link code right here, what this does is it takes out the word register from that uh, text that we had in there where it says do not have an account register now, specifically this text. And then uh, what it does is it creates the word register as a link that leads to the registration activity. So when that clickable text is clicked, then we start the registration activity. As far as the actual login, it is handled in the login uh, button listener. And the login button is here, and here's where we attach the listener. So the, all the code handling the login is going to be in, hidden inside of this method. As you can see in this method, we extract the text fields and from the text fields we get the actual values, the user ID and the password. There is a validation logic inside of is login values valid. Uh, we create the callback, we talked about the callback in the uh, registration screen video, and then we execute the login user. So inside of login user, this is where the API call against the backend takes place. We pass in the email, password, and then the actual callback. So these two values, email and password, password is fairly obvious. You will need to pass, pass the password regardless. But then the first, the first field is email. Uh, you may be wondering, like, what if you use a different way to identify the user in your app? Let me show you how Backendless handles this in, uh, from the configuration perspective. So this is my console, the, the front end for our backend. And let's switch to users. This is the user properties. Notice that the email property is marked as identity. And what this means is that in the login API, this would have to be the value that we send in to identify that user. In your app, you may have a different identity, but you will need to make sure that whatever the property that represents the identity of your users is actually marked as identity. Let me go ahead and run uh, this module so we can see the whole process in action. Uh, in the configuration settings, we select login. So this is our module, and let me start it up. I already have an emulator running. So here it is. This is our login form. As you can see, register became a link, and if we click it, it goes to the registration form, which was reviewed in the previous video. But uh, And yesterday, we also registered a user called Bob the Builder. And to log this user in, 
going to type in user ID and password, click login, and now it says logged in. This is it. That tells us that the user has been logged in, and we can proceed to the next step. Uh, this concludes the video. The next step will be reviewing the actual data loading. Hopefully you will stick around and wait for the new video to be published. But this is it for now. Thank you and happy coding!